Hey guys, welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. I have a really neat experiment coming up for you guys today. It's going to be a lot of fun for me, and I think you guys are going to find it pretty interesting. Someone suggested I should substitute the thermal paste between the CPU and the heatsink with mayonnaise. And I, you know, did a little bit of research to make sure that no one really did it before, and there are a ton of people that actually did that before. Uh, I want to try to be somewhat original. Um, so I looked up a couple other different condiments, and it seems like people really like to use condiments as thermal paste for some odd reason you know there's there's a bunch of videos uh, of that out there so if you want to you know check that out you can check that out because the videos are there uh, but then I thought you know it'd be cool if I use toothpaste uh, that's that's something that has the consistency that's similar to thermal paste I guess um, so I uh, grabbed this tube of toothpaste and then of course I also did some research checked online and there aren't really any articles or videos of anyone calling a CPU using toothpaste or a couple from like a really long time ago uh, but they're really really old like 2003 old um, and I wanted to kind of revive it and bring it back using a 1080p video and of course you know the sensors in here and my little temperature gun right here so we can record the results the CPU on this thing already has some cheap Banggood thermal paste on it this stuff's like two bucks for like 30 grams uh, you can check this out link will be in the description uh, it's some pretty cheap stuff I just use it for experiments but it gets the job done uh, and it does a pretty good job believe it or not first off we're gonna check the temperatures while just using the standard cheap thermal paste I'm gonna turn the computer on uh, we'll boot up and bring up the uh, system temperatures this has a couple thermal diodes on it and I'm also gonna record the temperature using my newbie uh, infrared thermometer we're gonna wipe the thermal paste off and then put toothpaste on it and then we're going to check out what the temperatures look like while using toothpaste as thermal paste. And before I go any further, let me go ahead and shoot off some system specifications at you guys. Of course, if you're one of my subscribers, you already know what this thing is. This is the Gateway 832 GM. Inside, we have a Pentium 4 Prescott processor running at 3 gigahertz. So basically, we're trying to cool the sun using toothpaste. Uh, we have one gigabyte of DDR RAM in this thing uh, using Intel integrated graphics. Uh, what else? I'm not really going to throw a video card or anything in here. We're going to be running Windows 7 off a USB flash drive because speed isn't really going to be a factor with this experiment. I just need uh, some operating system so I can take a look at the system temperatures uh, and maybe run a stress test or two and record some results. So really, uh, Windows 7 on a flash drive is going to be perfectly adequate for this. Um, and I mean, that's all the relevant system specifications. So let's go ahead, plug this thing in, boot it up and get started. Ah, I need to remember to install Windows to a flash drive way ahead of time because Win2 USB takes forever. I started this at, I think, uh, 410 and it's now 440 and I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting for this to finally finish installing because I can't do anything till it's on the flash drive. Now I did try to use this machine with the penny experiment and I was not successful. The Prescott was way too hot so that day I was really ticked off. I kind of just slapped everything back together without properly reapplying thermal paste to the CPU in this thing. Uh, and I just booted this up into Windows 7 and according to the hardware monitor that I was using, uh, the CPU was just sitting at like 54 degrees Celsius at idle. That really doesn't seem right. Um, so to be fair, I'm going to put uh, a fresh coat of thermal paste on this Pentium 4. So there is our squeaky clean Pentium 4 and here is the heatsink which I cleaned as well. Uh, this is kind of a pain because after this I'm going to have to go back and clean them all over again before I put the toothpaste on the CPU. But hey, you know what, it's still going to be fun. Uh, this thermal paste tends to be a bit watery at times so I'm going to squirt a little bit out before I apply it to the CPU. And I'm just going to, I don't know, this is this is always hard for me. I'm not sure how much I, uh, I want to put on here today, you know. Yeah, I'm just going to wing it. Uh, it should do the job, hopefully. Just going to take the heat sink. Oh my god, the heat sink is a million degrees because I used a hair dryer to dry it off because it was all wet and it is scorching hot. That really hurt. Ow. And I can already hear the complaints coming in about that thermal paste application. Come on guys, this is a video where we're putting toothpaste on a CPU. Take it a little less seriously. Temperatures are still, uh, they're a little bit better after the reapplication of thermal paste, but this is a Prescott after all. I went ahead and recorded some data. So at idle, according to our hardware monitor, we're sitting at 53 degrees Celsius. I also recorded a data point using the new B infrared thermometer. I picked the lowest point I could on the CPU heatsink 
and the heatsink is hovering around 40 degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do now is open up Prime95, run it for 10 minutes, and then we're going to record some data after it has completed. So for both trials, we're going to be running these small FFT torture tests. I'm just going to be using my phone to time this, and when I click OK, I'm going to click Start on the phone to start timing. Here we go. All right, so we just passed the 10 minute mark and the CPU has been holding steady at around 62 degrees Celsius. And the bottom of the heat sink is still hovering around 40. So this is the moment I know you all have been waiting for and trust me, I have been waiting for it as well. And my hands really burn right now because all I had in the back was 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and that stuff is strong and my hands are all cracked and dry. So that was pretty painful, but you know what? I do it for you guys. It was totally worth it. Uh, the diameter on this... Uh, the nozzle of this toothpaste bottle is sort of large, so I'm not sure how I'm going to tackle this. Uh, this is gonna, oh, this is gonna be bad. All right, let's let's see. Oh, okay, that looks pretty awful. That is a lot of toothpaste, and I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope um, that this works out. All right, so I'm gonna put the heat sink on top of it. Oh God, this is gonna go wrong in so many ways. It was just sliding around there. Oh god, you know, so, oh my goodness, I hope, I hope nothing goes pop, but when I do turn this on, I'm going to record the whole time because something might go wrong, and to catch it on camera would be pretty neat. So I'm just going to leave the desktop on its side like this, I'm afraid if I flip it over, the toothpaste might run down all over everything, so I'm just going to leave it flat, I haven't even plugged it in yet, so let's plug it in first and see what happens. Okay, powering on now. And this shroud is all messed up. Alright, well we're getting something. And it looks like we're going to boots. And I've already teased you guys on Facebook about it. If you uh, if you like the Facebook page, I went ahead and uh, posted a little picture, just a teaser. And if you haven't seen the, uh, or if you haven't liked the Facebook page, go ahead and check it out. That's how you're gonna get all the latest AI computers and technology updates. Boot Manager is missing. That's interesting, what's going on here? Okay, there we go. I unplugged both of these flash drives and now the system looks like it's actually going to boot up into Windows. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this footage up so you guys don't have to sit and wait for the paint to dry. And then we'll run those benchmarks and check the temps. Wow, look at you, thermal paste, holding your own. We are sitting at 50 degrees right now at idle. With the thermal paste, we were sitting at 53 degrees at idle, and we've been sitting here for around seven minutes, so it has had some time to set in. Uh, granted, I didn't really break the thermal paste, and we might have gained one or two degrees if I had uh, burned it in over a extended amount of time, uh, but we are still doing better with the toothpaste, so I'm going to record that. So right now, for the toothpaste idle, I have us sitting at 50 degrees Celsius according to the hardware monitor and 37 degrees Celsius according to the uh, newbie temperature gun, which was taking the temperature of the lowest point on the heat sink. It's gonna be the same procedure here. I'm gonna open up Prime95 and we'll run the stress test for 10 minutes. And what I'm really worried about here is how the toothpaste is going to fare after being exposed to a, you know, pretty large amount of heat for an extended period of time. So I'm not really sure how it's going to handle that. It's going to be interesting to see what our final temp is going to be after uh, we finish the stress test. All right, ready, set, go. And I just want to make something clear, in the thermal paste trial, and currently in this trial, we're about 7 minutes and 50 seconds into it, uh, the CPU did not throttle at all. I have all that data right here, and everything remained consistent throughout the stress test, so no throttling here. Alright, so we have hit the 10 minute mark, and once again, I'm going to go ahead and stop the timer because I have already recorded the data, and let me check the camera to make sure you guys can actually see that. There we go. And change the focus and that's a little bit better. So during the stress test, temperatures stayed around 61, 62 degrees Celsius uh, using the toothpaste. And according to the infrared thermometer, the heat sink temperature was still hovering around uh, 41 degrees Celsius, which is uh, about the same as the thermal paste as well. So uh, the toothpaste and the thermal paste are performing uh, at about the same level. 
Before I end this video, I do have to clean up. So let's check out the aftermath of the toothpaste in here. Uh, it's probably going to be an absolute mess. And this is probably going to take a while too. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the footage. Well, I can tell you it smells good right now, but I doubt it is going to look nice at all. The screws are removed and... Oh man, that went everywhere. What a pain in the butt this is going to be to clean up. That's disgusting. Oh my god, great, great, just great. There's a better look at that mess and you can take a look at the toothpaste stuck to the heatsink. That cleanup was horrible. Oh my god, I put way too much toothpaste on there. Uh, and it just went everywhere. It was all over the socket and the bracket and it was, you know, starting to get all over the motherboard. Um, the toothpaste just started to ball up and it fell into the socket and I had to manage to get out of the socket somehow. So, oh, something I would never ever do again, guys. But that was still pretty fun. And the toothpaste actually did a lot better than I thought it would. And I'm looking at my camera right now. I really hope my head is in the shot. I'm going to come down here because... Uh, I don't think I positioned it uh, right. But yeah, that did a lot better. Um, did almost as well, if not as well, as the thermal paste. Uh, I don't think it would last long term. I'm pretty sure after being exposed to those temperatures for an extended amount of time, like maybe over a couple hours, uh, the toothpaste would probably harden up and then everything would go south from there. And I'm trying not to move my hands either because everyone keeps like getting me for that. Like, stop moving your hands. I'm like, I like moving my hands. Yeah, so that was fun. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. If you like this video, don't forget to drop a like on it. If you didn't like it, please leave a reason why. Of course, uh, do not forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not yet. And there's always something I forget to say here. Oh yeah, you can support the channel by using my eBay and Amazon affiliate links, which will be in the description. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, and I will see you guys in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology. And if you couldn't tell, I would not recommend substituting toothpaste for thermal paste. And also, Next Doc featured my article on all their social media pages, drove a lot of traffic to the website. I was really surprised when I opened up the uh, WordPress uh, admin manager, and there was like a huge spike in traffic. So yeah, go ahead, uh, check them out. The link will be in the description show them some love for me and that's about it